Welcome to Highline BI 348 class, video number six. Hey, if you want to download this real quick, BI 348 chapter seven start or the finished file, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've done a lot in this workbook so far on each one of these red sheets is the uh, sheets we've completed. And in the last video, we did a one variable data table. Here it is. It was absolutely amazing what it could do for what if analysis. Now we want to talk about two variable data tables. Now I'm going to highlight this model. And again, normally we do all of this on the sheet, so we have all of our variables set, but again, we're learning, so we put it on each sheet to make it a little e easier to learn. Now I'm going to copy that, but before I'm going to click on the Calculate Revenue Sheet and use our keyboard Shift F11 to insert a new sheet, double click and call this Two Variable Data Table and Enter. Click back on this sheet, Control C. Now on Two Variable Data Table, Control V and point to our Smart Tag and say, Keep source column widths. All right, so last video, what we did is we took a bunch of different formulas and changed one variable. But now we're going to take total profit. And we want to throw in a bunch of different values of quantity or units, our decision variable, and one of our other formula inputs. We're going to change the number for our defect rate. So in essence, we're going to have a column of our units and a row filled with different defect rates, and there'll be an intersecting formula for each one of those two variables calculating total profit. Now I'm going to click in cell C33, and here's the one formula that we're going to need for our data table to then change the column and row inputs. I'm going to say equals and refer up to our total profit formula. Now remember, as with our one variable table, this formula is just a loan formula without a label. But that's the way a data table has to set up. I'm going to force the issue and put a label off to the side. Now there's the label I created. And if you look up on the home ribbon, I went ahead and right align this so that it says formula from original model quantity equals to 2,000. And I'm going to add Control B bold to that also. Now here's the thing. That's the one formula. And for data table to work, since I want a new many new decision variables and many new defect rates, I have to put all of the units or quantity below and all of the new defect rates in a row off to the side. All right, now I've already, from our last video, created data table start unit value 0 and the increment of 500. And I went ahead and typed a defect start rate of 1% and a defect rate increment value of 1%, because we want everything in the data table to be dynamic. So our first unit is going to be 0 and Enter. Now I'm going to say equals relative cell reference 1 above plus our increment of 500, F4 to lock that. Control Enter, and then copy it down until we get 6,000. Now off to the side. Remember, these are the, going to be the column variable. These will be the row variables. Equals in the start defect rate is 1%. Tab equals one cell to my left plus the increment. And I'm going to lock that with the F4 key. Control Enter, and copy it over. So now, any intersecting cell, what I really want is total profit at 2,500 units or quantity, 2% defective rate. Now, I am bothered if things aren't properly labeled. So I went ahead and properly labeled the formula. But I'm going to go ahead and properly label this also. Units, Control, Enter. And I'm going to highlight this. Control, 1 to format cells, go to alignment. And I'm going to go ahead and merge the cells and then change the orientation. Now, I can never remember which one's which. OK, so if I like it that way, I can do it Control-1. Other otherwise, I can flip it the other way. And I want to align it horizontally in the center and vertically in the center. While I'm at it, I'm going to go over to Borders and click Outline. Fill, I'm going to click a dark blue font. Something like, well, white. Click OK. So there we go. Now, 
It's fine if you don't have that, but I like to have some way to know what this is when I'm looking at it. Similarly over here, I'm going to say equals, and I don't want to type this whole thing out. And so I'm going to hit Control Enter, and then do something similar, except for this time, maybe I'll use Home and the Merge and Center button, and then some dark fill, white, and outline. Actually, you know what? I kind of like having that variable right there. I'm going to click here, Equal Sign, and then click up. And there's our Decision variable right there, and Enter. Now I'm going to highlight the whole table and add some borders. Inside, I'm going to add some green. Some of this green down here. And here's how it works. We have a column filled with quantity or units, a row filled with defect rates, and a formula that depends on both of them indirectly. We highlight in the upper left corner, there has to be that formula, variable, variable, empty cells, data, what if, Data table, or as we saw last video, the awesome keyboard, Alt-DT for data table. Now we have a row input. Remember, the way to memorize which one is which, because I tend to think each one of these is at the head of the row like a pivot table, but that's not the way data table works. Row input cell means which row has all of the variables, and it's not these. It's the original formula input, so you have to scroll up. And there it is. That's the percentage of boomerangs made that are defective and cannot be sold. And then for our column, it's called column input cell because it's a column filled with new numbers that you want to substitute into that formula. But we have to click on the original formula input, in our case, decision variable, that that formula is using. So that formula is using both the original decision variable and the defective rate. But when I click OK, it'll substitute each one of the units and defective rate. And when I click OK, you got to be kidding me. And there it is. Now, one thing I didn't do in the last video is the inside of this uh, doesn't have any formatting. I'm going to highlight these are dollar amounts. This is profit. So Control-1, number, uh, let's do currency, and I'm going to only show zero decimals. Click OK. We don't need to see the pennies. And there it is. That's absolutely amazing. For any intersecting cell, we can now see total profit where units are 4,000 and the defect rate is 3%. Now remember, you could put any two variables you want that this formula is using. This formula for total profit is using every single one of these. Up here, the original variables we defined, and then down that decision variable. So you could use any one of those. And what's so nice about this is, again, that formula is going to get pretty complicated. And if you look below in the answer sheet, I have the formula version of this. Now, two last things. Let's highlight this in Control-1. I'm going to add number with a comma, but no decimals because those are units. So we have some number formatting there. And you know we can go up and change this. That data table is not static. So if I went up and changed the start number to 1,000, instantly that whole table changes. I could change the increment. So I could say the start defect rate is 2, and the increment is 0.5. And I'm going to put a percent to enter actually 0.5%. And so now we have a different set of inputs into our data table formula. And just as we saw in last video, if you click in the cell, you could see that this is really an array formula using the table function entering these two values. You could see those curly brackets, which mean it was array entered. If I tried to delete one of these, it's not going to let us do anything to the array unless we do something to all of the values. That's pretty amazing. That is a two variable data table. In our next video, we'll actually you go back to our one variable data table and do our last item from our original list, which is to create a chart. All right, we'll see you next video.